Good evening, everyone. We are streaming live from Mediterranean Suburbata Fumata. to add a couple more droplets of color on some scales on the feet and I'll proceed with uh, creating UV islands for these three pieces of mesh I meant four including tongue So the best thing I was thinking, uh, the best thing for you to uh, sort of join live streams in future um, would probably be to subscribe either to my YouTube channel or better yet uh, subscribe to my Twitch channel where I think you'd be getting a notification when my stream starts so that way uh, you'll know when I'm live and when I'm live and uh, you know when you can join also uh, what I've noticed is um, I connected twitch with my Twitter account so each time uh, a live stream starts um, twitch uh, sends a an, an automated message from my account over to 
Twitter. And uh, so if you're like sort of following me on Twitter, you'll be getting a notification there as well. So these are some of the ways to keep sort of keep up with uh, you know my live stream activities if that's what you're interested in and uh, if you'd like to join sometimes during these live streams maybe you have some questions or something uh, that I can answer and uh, yeah so just a quick thought on that The best thing for live streams, as I've learned and I know it, I'm aware of it, is to be able to at least have a uh, sort of announcement day, day, uh, about a day in advance. Uh, that would be the best uh, way to keep up with live streams for for everyone and you know uh, for me uh, it's just I guess I'm not uh, too well sort of organized person and um, I still need to learn that bit to be able to plan uh, streams in advance these random sort of uh, pigmented scales uh, along the surface to break up the uniformity that is happening I don't know it's just I think it looks nice and uh, I tend to do it on uh, my work on my models just slightly minimize the effect is going to make it a little bit more subtle, subtle and not as pronounced as it was.
think it looks a wee bit better with uh, uh, this uh, action. I am uh, pretty sort of uh, I'm pleased with how we how this um, foot turned out. I like the way it looks. I like the color. I think um, overall when it's finished the animal it's going to be it's going to look uh, quite nice all right so mm, I'll just go on ahead and do the same thing with these uh, displaced pigmented scales on the forelimb as well and as soon as we finish that I'm going to jump and start creating UV layout find a clearer patch of red color in order to make these tiny scales in order to color them like this We can tone it down a little bit.
sound of silence and a silent hum of my computer fan, of my fan, and you know, just chilling and painting.
me. If I didn't know any better, this looks like a gila, I think, the poisonous lizard from uh, Central America or something like that. Let me just quickly check. Yeah, Gila or Heloderma.
this is one of two poisonous lizards, as far as I know. Um, I'm not sure what the other poison, poisonous lizard, venomous, venomous, I'm sorry, venomous lizard is. So let me just check that. So mostly they mention Gila. Okay, so beaded lizard. All right. All right, so this lizard also sort of looks like Gila. It actually, I think, belongs to the same family. Yeah, Hilo Dermit. Hellodermatidae. Yep. They're basically the same thing. But, you know, science categorizes them as two. That's a good thing to know. Although, you know, there are those, like, uh, Komodo dragons from Indonesia where if it bites you, you can pretty much die because of uh, all the uh, bacteria <coughs> and whatever it has in its mouth. So literally, when it bites you, you, uh, if not treated, you can die out of, you know, infection. Which, you know, I'm not sure what what would be like the worst case scenario to be bitten by a Komodo dragon or Heloderma, Heloderma or Gila? It's a more popular name. I'm pretty sure I would die quickly because I'm. I'm not actually. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm talking correctly. Like I'm allergic to bites from bee and wasp but that doesn't mean uh, I think because these are not probably does not have same toxin most likely I'm not sure talking out of my ass a little bit and uh, so I wonder what would happen like if I was bitten by you know some poisonous, venomous, venomous, venomous snake or lizard. Hmm. Should read about it. Maybe I would discover some similarities between uh, wasp and bee toxin and snake toxins. Yeah, I think maybe because oh, venom will probably get you killed, like you know, in in about an hour, two hours, three hours, I don't know, five hours stops. While the infectious bite will probably take a lot longer, and I guess it it'll be like like more gruesome and more painful in the end. Because most of these toxins, they uh, sort of relatively cli quickly uh, stop your heart or you know paralyze you, and uh, you won't, you are not able to breathe. And uh, so yeah, it goes relatively quickly, which is merciful and weird aspect. Well, you know, on the other hand, having your organs being shut down one by one uh, under the effects of uh, infection from Komodo dragon bite, or I'm not sure, I'm, again, I'm talking out of my ass, I'm not sure how does the um, infectious bite uh, 
affect the body uh, which parts you know sort of give away first and what happens to the body after it's being bitten there's a cool website um, forgot the name I should find it uh, it's about a guy it's a guy who literally uh, underwent a uh, bites from uh, like most known uh, venomous um, insects from spiders to you know wasps and stuff like that and um, uh, uh, the guy basically created a scale with its name like his name and that carries uh, that uh, is like the scale where he evaluates the um, pain uh, describes the pain from the bite you know of these ver various uh, exotic and uh, all kinds of insects and uh, yeah I bet like most of these from his list would you know do all kinds of crazy stuff to my system oh great <laughs> you should ask her You should definitely ask her, man. You duck. What's going on? <laughs> Great Scott Smarty. Well, 
that's what she said. to find this scale. I have it bookmarked somewhere. Just a sec. Oh yeah, I found it. Pretty cool. That was quick. Alright, so... So the thing is uh, called a Schmidt Schmidt pain index, and the guy name is uh, Justin Schmidt, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna post a link here, and another one. Just check. Pretty cool. Let's make these let's make these guys a little bit more subtle. Whatever it takes for science, bro.
that's that's more like it. Yeah, he's got balls because some of these insects are like hell, from what I, what I read uh, on this uh, pain index, like excruciating pain. And you know, uh, none of us is relatively well designed to, you know, take so much pain. So, yeah. Someone should try and uh, someone should try and uh, like outdo his uh, pain index. Like you know, some guy create a pain index for mammalian like mammal bites. That'd be interesting. Siberian tiger bite, excruciating near death experience. Polar bear. I lost an arm. By the end of the, you know, by the completion of the pain index, the guy would probably be like, you know, <laughs> brain in a ball of some sort of liquid. <laughs> yeah. Sort of the person who does the pain index for sharks, and the pain index has only one like uh, described animal, <laughs> like great white, <laughs> didn't survive. End of index. And that'd be nut. That'd be nut. <laughs> nutter, nutter, and a heart. Everything for science, dog. <laughs> nut. <laughs> oh, God. Pain index for tank mines. Same thing as shark. Well, actually, I'm wrong because if a person dies, you know, yeah, during the attack of the shark or whatever, the mine explodes, and you know. Um, Basically, the the index index wouldn't be wouldn't have like uh, uh, no entries, like non entries, zero entries, because you know if the person died, how could it describe the pain index, like pain influence on the body? If we <coughs> go a little bit more philosophical about it,
Alright, so I think this is it. <coughs> Let's create those UV islands. Take you to the Kokomo, the UV island of a dino cherry. Yo, that's where you wanna go. Mo. Go down to UV. Yo, oh boy, the heat, the heat does weird things. And Justin Schmidt should know better. Should know best. Sorry. Heat is redonkulous. Anyway, let's create these UV islands. Let's get it over with. Whoops. So I'm going to do a simple splitting.
is. So basically with done it. I love how <clears throat> how cool the UV master has became over time. And uh, it's it produces pretty decent uh, results uh, by itself, but you know if uh, if you need to, you can relatively easily modify and tweak, you know, the results to you know get better um, usability of you know UV planes. So UV planes. <coughs> so let's see what happens here. Work and clone. Um, flatten. Yeah, I think this is alright. We won't be spending any more time on this fella. So basically we've got our UV island here. Let me create a texture map. So first thing we need to do, <coughs> we need to go to the highest subdivision level available in order to create a texture map, uh, the color map. We need to go to UV map and we need to select a uh, size that we need. I'm going to pick 4K, I think it's going to be substantial. If not, uh, I can easily come back and, you know, make a bigger texture so new from polypaint and we should have our texture here clone texture we need to go here above uh, flip vertical export let me create a texture folder Lamb C for color. All right, I'm going to save it in a teeth format, and that's it. Now we need to go um, to the lowest subdivision level. We're going to displacement map. Um, we need to press um, hold on no no that's yeah okay uh, I think we need to impress everything here and yeah, just create displacement map And that's it. We've got our displacement map. We should go to alpha, flip vertical again, and export our four lamp D. Save. And <coughs> normal map. Flip green channel for 3ds Max. That is very important to do it in inside ZBrush. Uh, basically, normal maps have created so much headaches. Uh, headaches for me. Headaches. Um, let me try and create it. Actually, I think I should have unpressed smooth UV for this guy as well. Yeah, not sure. Not 
not again. Sorry. What I wanted to do is press, press clone normal map again. We're going to texture, flip vertical, export, for limb N. <coughs> N stands for normal map. I am going to quickly load Photoshop just to inspect the normal map. I'm not sure whether. I should have have smooth UVs press. Oh, textures for them. I don't know, I think it's I think it's alright. <coughs> there is some sort of uh, errors in displacement uh, in normal math. Um, this happens when a mesh sort of uh, uh, cuts uh, through itself. This happens uh, in uh, some creases when the mesh overlaps itself and uh, it uh, sort of goes a little bit bad. And uh, generally you should always try and you know either um, fix the mesh, which is probably the better uh, thing to do, or you can fix the normal map by overpainting surrounding color over this. And this way it won't show uh, it won't show up during the render times in 3ds Max. So, all right, seems all right. So I'm just going to quickly uh, turn off textures for our uh, for our mesh because uh, if we decide to save like this, our Z tool uh, is going to save these textures as well and. Uh, you're just unnecessary, unnecessarily increasing the file size um, so it's better to leave these guys out oh okay so we st we we're yet to create a UV island for the foot alright so let's do it The UV island for the foot. This is gonna be the best UV island you ever seen. did they do?
this, so I need to delete this as well. And this. Alright, so this one needs reverse. And this one as well. So I'm not sure why these random things are happening. Maybe because, oh yeah, I have had the symmetry on. That's why it was causing me some headaches. Well, it was not causing me any headaches, but just practicing my pronunciation of that word, because I've noticed it's a bit laggy for me. So the headache, headache, headache. Come on, come on. Don't be shy. Push. so we have our foot uh, um, what's the word what's the word that I'm looking for we've cleaned up our foot selection for polygrouping Now maybe I should do this for the upper piece of the foot as well. Mm, nah, it's not optimized. Not the word that I was after. something like prepped so we prepped the paw group for the uh, sole of the foot for the pads dinosaur pads of its foot something like that Alright, so I just noticed that my mesh is going spirally um, at the base of the foot, uh, which is not the perfect thing, but we'll leave it like that. Yeah, prepped now in the hindsight sounds better. It's just, 
<coughs> sometimes I'm struggling to find a word. Maybe I should just <coughs> stop struggling and uh, when I'm having difficulties um, on the go when I'm talking and I'm you know coming up to a part where the cer certain word is uh, going to give me headaches um, I'll just use like some random word or just a specific word that will indicate the you know lack of uh, lack of my knowledge lack of uh, you know ability to recall the exact word that I'm looking for at the time I was speaking about it so you know I was working on the dinosaur foot and then I tried to apple the polygroups so that we can create UV islands yeah so we're going to Z plugin and Revisiting our friend uh, Unwrap. Done. Work and clone. Let me just see what we've made. All right. I think it's good. So this is another. piece of mesh <laughs> yeah a trend for non-english speaking areas So we're going to take um, 4K again. I think uh, it is going to be substantial because uh, we're not even uh, looking at the entire leg. It's just you know the um, the tarsal with digits and uh, partially. Tibia and fibula. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You better be apple. so we appled the texture now I'm going to quickly uh, strawberry the texture back to the pier and um, I just need to flip the banana all right this is done let me just quickly lower the subdivisions to the subdivision number one let's go to a uh, displacement 
map and let's click pineapple and make this thing happen Flip vertical and export foot D. I believe it on. Create normal map. foot and and this one's done too Once I have finished all these, exporting all these textures, I'll need to create a cavity maps as well. sure if I like this so I'll need to mm, clone this guy and try and create a little bit more optimized uh, topology because this is uh, a little bit too much at the moment too much polygons for a low poly uh, subdivision step So we need to go to Z Remesher and let's say 2000 polygons. That's still ridiculously a large amount of polygons for a you know geometry of this shape, but never mind. Yeah, it's still too much. And we'll need to do All right, so this is good. Or is it? Yeah, I think it is. I'm just going to quickly, because I've got this polygon here. I don't like it, because it's not divided uh, uh, through the middle. So we're going to divide that thing with um, mirror and weld. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's it. 
it's done you can see it here the next thing we need to do is so our low poly here has 15,000 polygons and our target and our <coughs> sort of remeshed uh, Z remeshed retopologized tongue mesh has 1,000 polygons so that's that's a lot more economical for 3ds max what we need to do now is copy that mesh let's divide it this is what is this one million polygons and this fella has how many polygons no not the cage not the cage oh you stupid fool Right, so this guy has 15 million polygons um, I will need to divide this fella uh, once more 4 million polygons mm, should I divide it one more time alright so I'll just save because I realize I'm walking into dangerous fields it's always better to save than sorry trickery uh, in creating UV maps is uh, when you're uh, creating models for gaming industry because you basically have uh, on most occasions you have one mesh and you need to pack all these textures you know onto one UV plane and uh, that can become a little you know challenging Especially for you know uh, someone with a little to no experience, then you know it can be a little bit gruesome. All right, let's project details from our. Uh, okay, so one or more of the visible subtools contains polypane data. Would you like to project polypane into the active? Subtool, yes, we need that poly.